Okay, I have an original fact to share with you today. It's based on three tuple quasi bessie sequences of order four. So I'll explain what that is at the end. Uh, but as you can see, I have a good selection of chord values, suits, and colors. Now, since we both kind of saw the cards, uh, why don't we mix them a little bit? So why don't we perform what's called the Klondike Shuffle. Uh, this is where you take the top and bottom off as one. So it's a great way to mix cards, actually. And then we can follow that up with a Mon Shuffle. Now that comes in two varieties, Over Under or Under Over. Which would you like? Over Under? Okay, so this is how that works. This one goes Over Under, Over Under, Over Under, Over Under, Over Under, Over. Okay. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to deal out the cards into three piles, okay? And you can tell me kind of where those go. So this one here, you want down here. What about this one? Top right, top left. What about this one? Top left, bottom center, top right. What about this one? There again, bottom, left, top right, center, and then left. Okay, very good. Now, we're going to label... Uh, these packets or piles uh, label one, two, three, and you're going to do that. Now, whatever number you give it, uh, that will determine how many times we perform a very, very destructive shuffle in mathematical card magic. It's called the Australian Down Under. Okay, so which pile do you want to be like quote first? Middle one? Okay, so we're going to do a down under, just one. So down, under, down, under, down, last one goes on top. Uh, which pile do you want designated as number two? This one, okay. So we'll perform two down unders. Uh, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top, so that's one. Uh, down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. Now that would leave this pile as quote pile three. So we have a little bit of work to do. We need to do three down unders, okay. So this is all determined by you. There's one. A down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. And I think we have just one more left. Down, under, down, under, down. Last one goes on top. Okay. So what we're going to do to finish is I'm going to take uh, either one of these. And I'm going to Klondike a pair on the left and then one on the right. Klondike a pair on the left and then the right. Klondike a pair on the left and then the right. Okay. Now I have a written prediction over here that I can bring out. Um, so you can ignore the, the top part because it's talking about the structure that we'll go through. So here's my written prediction. Uh, one pile will consist of card values that have an even number of letters in their names. Uh, the other pile will consist of card values that have an odd number of letters in their names. Okay. Well, I mean, that could be true, but I think the more interesting question is which is which, okay? So let's just kind of spread these out and see if I can get a sense. So we're claiming that one of these has just like odd value letters in the card names and the other one has even, uh, but which is which? Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am 100% sure this is the one that has card values with an even number of letters in their names, which would mean that these would have to have an odd number of letters in their names. So let's just check that. So even number, okay, Jack, uh, J-A-C-K, four letters. Oh, another Jack. <laughs> uh, nine, N-I-N-E, four letters. F-O-U-R, four letters. Uh, F-I-V-E, four letters. And a king, K-I-N-G. Now, what about these? Three or five, I guess, an odd number. Uh, queen has five letters in its name, so just seven. Uh, ace has three, A-C-E. Uh, two has three, T-W-O. Ten has three, T-E-N. And six has three, S-I-X. Wow, I don't know how you were able to accomplish this in such a way that it perfectly matched a written prediction that was written ahead of time before all of the choices that you made. Okay, so how does this work? Let me just show you. So this is called a three-tuple quasi-Bessie sequence. 
of order four. So the underlying structure is like a one, zero, zero, one. Now the exponents here represent concatenation. Okay, so if you go back and look at the packet, what I had was I had three cards at the top that all had an even number of letters in their names, followed by a whole block of six card values that had an odd number of letters in their names, followed by a set of three that have an even number of letters in their names. Okay, now when you deal out, now I performed a Klondike followed by a Mange. All that does is it preserves this order exactly, or at worst, it reverses the order. Well, this is symmetric here, so it doesn't matter if you read it this way or, or left or right, okay? And then if you remember, we did this like one, two, three. So that means like all the ones from the top three will be kind of at the bottom. And then we did um, three more dealings. Those would be zeros, three more dealings, another set of zeros. So, so far each pile would have a one, zero, zero. And then the final set of three ones would go on top. So the, the key is the structure of each of those packets of four cards was essentially a one, zero, zero, one, where one represents a card with an even number of letters in its name, and a zero represents a card with an odd number of letters in its name. Okay, and then the other secret has to do with the remarkable nature of quasi Bessy sequences. Uh, in particular of order four, they are invariant relative to the down under shuffle. Now there are very few packet structures that are not harmed by the down under shuffle. Very few. In fact, it's my conjecture really, the only ones that aren't are either Bessie sequences or quasi Bessie sequences. So this 1001 is a very special and rare organization to a packet of cards. But in the end, if you perform a down under shuffle, it will still result in like a 1001. You'll still have the top card will have an even number of letters in its name, the next two odd number of letters in their names, and then the bottom one will have an even number of letters in their name. And it doesn't matter if you do the down under shuffle once or a million times it preserves that structure. Okay, so this is just a simple example of how you can leverage your knowledge of these Bessie sequences and quasi Bessie sequences, or more generally, what I've called two, three, four, five, or in general, n-tuples. And so this is where there's a repeating of the values that allow you to divide that up into individual packets which are then preserved under so many different shuffling routines. And so you don't really lose much knowledge of, okay, what is the packet structure after a lot of mixing that may have been done. So anyway, so thank you for watching and take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.